Welcome to this mini-series on how to build a REST API with Node.js, MongoDB, and Express. In this video, I'm going to show you almost everything you need to know about dealing with requests in Express, as well as introduce you to this program known as Postman, which as you will see will help us build REST APIs in a much easier way. So if your plan is to follow along, make sure to download Postman link in the description below. Now if you're unfamiliar with Node.js, Express, or what a REST API is, I got videos for those on this channel, so feel free to check them out. So with that said, let's get started by opening up VS Code. Now, I have a Node.js project already set up, along with Express installed and a dev dependency known as Nodemon. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Nodemon is, it's just a dev dependency that would automatically restart the server each time we save our project. So, inside of my index.js, I'm going to require Express and set that equal to a constant called Express. And because Express returns a function, I'm going to do const app and set that equal to the function that Express returns. Then, I'm going to create another constant and call it port and set that equal to 3000 because that is the port we're going to be listening into on our local host. Then I'll call a method called app.use and inside of it I'll paste in another method which is express.json. Now app.use is a method to run middleware and middleware is nothing more than a program that will run between two things and what we want to run is the express.json method and what express.json does is it converts any objects that we have inside of our JavaScript and converts it into JSON when sending it back to the client as a response. Then right at the bottom I'm going to call app.listen and that would be a function where the first argument would be the port number and the second argument would be a function and I'll just log out to the console, app is running on port and I'll place in there the port constant. So with the line of app.listen I am currently running the server but the server is currently not serving up anything on my local host. Which the whole purpose of having a server is to serve up something. Now in order to serve something we would need to establish a way for the client to communicate with the server. We would need to create a route or if you are from Manchester then that would would be a root. Now in order to create a root not Groot then in that case we have to call app dot and then the HTTP method that we're going to use. So for example if we want to get something that would be app dot get and if we want to post something that would be app dot post and there's also app dot patch and app dot delete more information about that in my three minutes of rest API video. So right now we want our client to get something from the server. So in that case we're going to do app dot get and get would be a method that would accept two arguments. The first argument would be the route that we want to connect to and I'm just going to go ahead and place in there a forward slash. I'll explain more about that in a moment. And then the second argument would be a callback function. And the callback function would deal with the request and send out the response back to the client. So before we talk about the request and the response, let's talk about the route where I just left a forward slash. Now right over here, we're going to paste in the link that we are going to connect to, also known as a URI. Now a URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier, which is kind of like a URL, but you don't have the HTTPS part in the beginning of it. So say for example I was building a REST API for YouTube and I was dealing with the users route. So in that case I would do forward slash users and not YouTube forward slash users. So let's jump into the callback function for the app.get method and this callback function would also have two arguments. The first argument would be the request and the second argument would be the response. Now the request and the response are objects and they carry certain information. What information? Well, a lot of information, but hold on a moment because I don't want to confuse you just yet because right now we just want to focus on the response itself because there's a method on that that we want specifically and that is response.send. Now the send method would contain whatever information that we want to send from the REST API to the client. So I'm just going to go ahead and place inside of that an object. Then I'll go over to the browser and search for localhost 3000 and there I should find my object in JSON format. But where's the rest of the information? Because if you've seen my three minutes of REST API you would have noticed that there was a lot going on about the request and the response, there was response status codes, there was response headers, and there was a lot more information that is clearly not showing up in my browser. Well, the answer to that is the browser is not a tool that is meant to analyze requests and responses, it is meant for you to enjoy the internet, even though half the times it's not enjoyable. So instead, we're going to use Postman. Now, hopefully you already have Postman installed, so right now I'm just going to give you an overview of Postman and how it works. So once you open up Postman, you would find that there would be this 
plus icon right over here which it says create a new collection now this will create a new collection and this collection would contain a bunch of requests that you are going to send to your rest api now next to my new collection there'd be three dots or three circles and there you'd be able to rename your collection duplicate your collection or add a request that is the option we want to click on and there it would automatically add to us a get request now remember get post patch and delete and a bunch of other http methods that are rarely used well here's a list of most the http methods if not all of them i don't know if it's all of them go ahead and look it up right now we want to choose the get request because we created a route with the get method and right over here it would say enter request url and that's because we have to enter the url and not the uri that means we'd have to enter the entire link so i'll go over to my browser and just copy the localhost 3000 because that is the entire link and if you deployed your rest api then that would be http or https then your domain name and then the routes that are on your domain name now underneath where you enter your url or your url that was a mouthful you'd find multiple options here like params authorization headers and body but right now we're not really going to focus much on these i'll make a separate video entirely dedicated to postman and this big blue button right over here that looks like it's been styled with bootstrap well that is how we would send out our request so if i click on send i will get a response and it would say the status is 200 okay and it would give me the time of the response the size of the response and then there'd be the information like the body here's my object you'd find cookies we don't have any cookies you would find headers and here are the response headers powered by express the content type is json the date of the response and that pretty much sums up postman now keep in mind it is more powerful than this but for now this is all we need to know to get started with building rest apis okay so let's just jump back into our node app because i want to talk more about our request and our response objects so remember when i said there is a lot of information on the request and the response okay great because now what i'm going to do is log out to the console the request before I send out my response. And if I go into Postman and click send and return back to my terminal, you would find all of this. I mean, what the junk is all of this? Well, this is the request itself. There's a lot of information here and don't let that scare you because we only want a few things and usually these things are actually at the end of the request. So for example, if you could see here, there is a property because this is kind of like an object and you could see that it has params and it's empty. And then there's also query and that is empty. These two, we're going to talk more about them in a moment. If I scroll down, we also have the body and that is an empty object because we didn't have a body in our request and we also have the route and it says the path is forward slash. So yeah, there's a lot of information here about the request so we could simply use it whenever building our node app if we need to find out certain information about a request that has come through, we could just go ahead and check on the request object. So right now we're going to talk about one of the first properties we've seen on this request and that is params. And params stands for a parameter also known as a route parameter. But before I explain to you what a route parameter is, I want to introduce you to the problem that route parameters solve. So for example, say I had a database with a bunch of users inside of it, and I could simply create a route forward slash users, and whenever I send a get request to that route, it will bring me back a list of all the users in the database. But what happens when I want to get user 1 or user 3 specifically? Well, in that case, all I have to do is create an app.get method with forward slash users forward slash 1, and then an app.get method forward slash users forward slash 2, and then an app.get method forward slash users forward slash 3, and so on and so forth. And if I have 300 users, well, well, then in that case all I have to do is create 300 different get methods and you can see how absurd this is becoming so the simplest solution is to use a route parameter which in other words is nothing more than a route that can change and how you create a route parameter is you would do a colon and then its name and I'll call my route parameter underscore ID now to get a better picture of what I'm talking about I'm going to log out to the console request.params and params was the property that we saw on the request object not that long ago so now in postman i'm going to create a new request and that would be localhost 3000 forward slash users forward slash chicken now keep in mind the users route already exists because it is a static value but inside of the node app it says colon id and here it says chicken which is completely different so now i'm going to go ahead and press send and over in the terminal i could see that i got an object and there is a property of underscore id and it's set equal to chicken so that's pretty cool because i just sent information from the client to my rest api and now i could access it inside of my node app 
So for a more practical example, I'll go ahead and create a variable called users and place inside of it three objects with a property of underscore ID and a property of name and I'll just give them some random names. Now inside of my app.get method, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called user, singular, and I'm going to filter out the users array. So that would be users.filter and inside of that there will be an if check. And if the user.id is equal to request.params.id, which in other words I'm saying if the user user inside of the array's ID is equal to the parameter, then in that case, return the user into the user variable. Now before you all jump on me and say, oh, you're using two double equal signs and that is bad practice, I'll just let you know that a number received from a route parameter is a string. And do you really want me to confuse you with converting numbers into strings just to make sure that our dummy app is as efficient as possible? Yeah, I thought so. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and create another if check and that is if we have no users because that route parameter does not exist. So for example, somebody entered chicken, obviously there is no user with the ID of chicken. Then in that case, I'll throw an error with the ID that was mentioned in the route parameter. Then of course, if the users.filter found a specific user with that ID, then in that case, the second if statement will not run and therefore I will do response.send the user underneath the second if statement. Then I'll paste all this code into a try catch block so we can catch any errors if they occur. And if any error occurs, I'll just go ahead and log it out to the console and do response.send the error. And you know what, before the dot send, I'll go ahead and add dot status. So that would be request.status.send and inside of the status, I'll pass into it 400, meaning there was a problem with the request so the user could know what they messed up. So inside of Postman, I'm going to search for forward slash users forward slash two and it will give me Walter White. But if I go ahead and change the two to seven, it's going to say to me, this user does not exist. Now show this to anybody who does not know programming and they'll be like, whoa, bro, you're a hacker. And your response to that should be, yes, I read Hillary's emails. So the next thing I want to show you are queries. Now queries are kind of like route parameters because they are located inside the URI. However, this information is additional information. So it might be an API key. If you're making some kind of map like Google Maps, you might have the longitude and the latitude. So it could be different values. And queries are really great when using get requests because you don't have to add things inside of the body. Now how you would create a query is I'll go at the end of my URL and add a question mark. Now after the question mark would be all the queries. So I'll just go ahead and create a query of name and I'll set that equal to Hank Schrader. Did I spell that right? Uh, well, whatever. And I'll go ahead and create another query and how you do that is just by simply putting the and symbol and then I'll go ahead and put, for example, age and set that equal to 50. Now inside of my app.get method, I'm going to const console.log request.query and as you can see I'll get an object with the first and second queries in my terminal. So you could go ahead and play around with that as much as you like, I just wanted to show it to you. But what about the body? Because all this time we still didn't talk about the request body. Well what I'm going to do is create an app.post method and its route would also be forward slash users. Now one thing to note is it is okay if you have two routes that are the same as long as the methods are different. So if you have an app.get forward slash users and app dot post forward slash users that is fine because the HTTP methods themselves are different. So I'm going to go ahead and put the second argument my callback function with the request and the response. Then I'll go ahead and call my response.send method and inside of that I'll put in an object and the object will have a property of message. I could go ahead and put whatever properties I want inside of here but my message property will be set equal to request dot body because I want the body of the request and then I'll do dot name because I'm going to provide the body of the request with a name property as you will see in a moment. Then I'll go ahead and concatenate to that says hi. So over in Postman, I'm going to go ahead and create another request and this will be a post request and I'll make it to forward slash users. Then I will go ahead and click on body and inside of it, I will get a few options. I'm going to choose raw and then I'm going to change this drop down from text to JSON. And that's just saying that our body will have raw JSON. I'll go ahead and paste in some JSON here, which will be an object. And this object will have a name property as I showed in my node app where I got the name property of the body. This is that name property. Then I'll go ahead and set that equal to whichever name I want. For example, I'll set it equal to Flynn. Then if I go ahead and press send, I'll get a response of message and that would be Flynn says hi. Now using the other HTTP methods would be similar to this one. You would have a body of the request, you could have route parameters, and you could have queries inside of your URLs. And that's pretty much almost everything you need to know about working with requests and express in Node.js. 
Now there is one more thing that we need to talk about and that is Express Middleware and I will be releasing a short video on that after this one because now we're ready to learn how to use a database. The database we're going to be using is MongoDB and I hope you're excited to learn it because I'm excited to show it to you. And with that said, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Leave a comment, share with me your thoughts and if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching.